Hello and thanks for watching BSG Cast. He's Matt, I'm Nat, and let's get started, Matt. Well, last week we brought you guys a little bit of off-season BSG goodness, and this week we have a little bit more. Yeah, Katie Sackhoff, I'm in the last interview, talked a bit about Razor, which was pretty exciting, yeah. and some season four goodness. Yeah. Um. <laughs> now, this week we've got a little bit more about who Katie Sackhoff is as an actress, and it's not quite so much about Starbuck. Really reveals a lot more about her personality, though. This yeah. is where I really got the sense of what kind of a person she was, so it was pretty cool Yeah, to and see. certainly what kind of an actress she is. Yeah. So um, the first question that we actually ended up asking was, how was it walking into a role that was previously played by a man in the original Battlestar Galactica series? It, at first, it was a little daunting. I mean, um, I don't think I really knew how big of a deal it was going to be until people started asking me if I was okay with it. I was like, yeah, why? I, I didn't understand why it was such a big deal. I'd watched the show. I was like, okay, so what? It's some long guy. I don't give a shit. And, um, <laughs> It was. It became a huge deal, and because I'd only watched the show for like two seconds, so um, I didn't really realize it was going to be such a big deal. And then it got just, I mean, death threats and hate mail, and it was it was a it was really ridiculous. And and so I finally had to stay off the internet, and then it just all stopped after the miniseries. So I am, um, you know. And now I'm just remaking everything, so I figure I'm just gonna work with David. I can make a career out of redoing '70s shows. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> oh my okay, so after three years of playing Kara Thrace, it kind of begs the question: How much Starbuck is there in Katie Sackhoff? In the morning, when I'm tired, there's a lot more, because um, I find myself a little more cranky than I normally am. Because I'm not cranky, I normally bounce out of bed at like. 6 a.m. and I'm always happy and so that's that's a main difference between Starbuck and I is that I don't um, we both joke around a lot um, make light of heavy situations at first what Grace Park used to do interviews and say that that Kara, um, who's the most different from their character and Grace used to always say Katie because I used to show up in like little skirts and high heels to work and then put on my <laughs> army fatigues and everyone was like what the hell is going on with this girl and I think over the years I've turned into her a little bit. Um, I've taken the things from her that I wanted in myself. I was never assertive. Um, I was always really shy in front of people, new people, and I still am. Like when I go up on stage, I'm really shy for about the first five minutes now. Um, so I took that kind of thing, her strength, I took from her. I said in an interview last time, I think that in all honesty, if someone came up and tried to mug me, that in my brain, I would think I could take them out. Like, I would think that I could honestly, I, I don't know if I could actually say, oh, this isn't a movie anymore. You probably shouldn't fight back. Um, because I'm convinced that I've got so much training that I'm like, just bring it on. Just bring it on. That's fine. So I don't, I carry myself differently. Like, you know, I've kind of got that, that, like, my best friend calls it the New Yorker stare. Like, no one fucks with you because you've got this whole, like, red aura around you that, like, you know, no one fucks with a New York woman. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was a farm girl from Oregon. Like, my aura was pink. And, <laughs> and now it's red. So it's just different. It, there's, that's the uh, main difference as well. All right, so anyone who was watching Katie Sackhoff before Battlestar Galactica will remember that she was in Halloween back in 2002. And she's got some absolutely great anecdotes from working in that, so we couldn't help but share those, because they just, as irrelevant as they are to the BSG cast, They're they just really kick ass. Funny. <laughs> that was a really, really fun movie. I had, um, it was my 21st birthday, and I'd gone out partying with all my friends. And so I was really hungover at like 7 a.m., um, and got a phone call that, Katie, you need to pack and get on a plane because you just got this role in Halloween and I don't even remember auditioning for it. Um, and so they flew me, on, flew me to Vancouver, had no idea what was going on, hadn't read the script, was dying on page like 15. And I'm like, okay, perfect, this will be easy. And they kept keeping me alive and I was like, okay, what am I doing in this scene? And they're like, eh, we don't know, just make it up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so that was really fun for me just because um, to, con to continue to live, like I kept calling my agent going, didn't die today, it was so weird. Um, and, um, and getting the cast of my head was really interesting because um, I'm scared of, like I'm claustrophobic and I have asthma. And so 
being stuck in that thing with just a straw in my mouth was really terrifying. And they're like, oh, it's just like a facial. I'm like, this is not like a facial. Trust me, I've had a facial and I'm freaking out right now. Like, I need a shot of alcohol, like something. And um, um, when it finally came and we took it out of the box, it looked so much like me. And it was very close to Halloween that I asked them if I could keep it. And then they thought I was really crazy, and they were like, why do you want to keep it? And I'm like, because I want to mail it to my parents. <laughs> and they were like, you can't mail this to your parents, you crazy girl. It'll rot. And I said, well, that's totally fine. I'll just put it in a tank of formaldehyde. Because I really wanted to keep I didn't think I was asking anything too crazy. I was like, it's, it's a head. How cool would that be? Have fish swimming around or something? Like, that's awesome. They're like, you're nuts, and you can't have the head. OK. Like on a steak in front of my parents' house on Halloween. That would have been awesome. <laughs> I want my head on a stage. Wow, that's some twisted humor <laughs> she's got there. <laughs> anyway, she's clearly played some pretty different roles like, prior to BSG. You know, there's Halloween, Bionic Woman, there was Undress. I don't know if you guys remember that MTV show, but we had to ask, what is her favorite kind of role to play? You know what's so funny is when I did Undress, I had dark, long brown hair, and that's the picture on my passport. And it looks nothing like me because I am naturally blonde. Not this blonde, but naturally blonde. And um, so they always, it doesn't look anything like me when I did it, which is kind of cool. Because um, I took off my shirt for the first time. Um, only to a bra. I'll never show the actual boobies. Anyway, um, <laughs> I won't. My, my poor father would have a heart attack. There's no way. Um, um, I don't know. It's, it, when I moved to Los Angeles from Oregon, I always got the stereotypical blonde roles of like the girl that was like, oh my god, that's so funny. So what do we do now? Like, I mean, those are the roles I played. And then for some reason, they cast me as Starbuck. And I walked into the audition with high heels on and like really long hair and tons of makeup. And it took me a long time to convince them that I was tough enough to play this role. And, and David, I kept saying, she's just, she's just not tough enough. She's just not tough enough. And, and so... Now I'm like the go-to tough girl. Like so, I don't, I don't know what's more fun. It's really fun for me to play with guns because that's something I would never do. You know, like I, I mean, I don't know many girls. Like there, I guess there aren't many girls, but I don't know anyone personally that can like take apart an AK-47 blindfolded and put it back together. That's pretty cool. I don't know what I'll ever do with that, <laughs> but I can do it. Um, um, so I, I don't know what's the most fun. I just like to be challenged, and I think that's part of the reason why I am excited for Battlestar ra to wrap up, because now this character is so so much a part of me that I could wake up half asleep and play the role. Um, so I do like to be challenged, and like the Lifetime movie I did was so much fun because I was like all over the place and just being stupid, um, and that was challenging because I had to be funny. Was pregnant? No, I did. I just did a Lifetime movie that aired a week ago that was a uh, romantic comedy like I aged from 17 to 34 and it scared the crap out of me that I could actually still play 17. It was called How I Married My High School Crush. I think it airs tonight on, it, I don't know when it airs in Canada but um, I'm sure it's somewhere, YouTube. Um, <laughs> um, but that's the closest to my personality that I've ever played which people find hard to believe but um, so I don't know. The funniest thing that came out of that was my boyfriend and I, like I said, we're already, we already have an age difference, and then he saw the pictures of me being 17, and he was terrified. <laughs> so as cool as it is to talk about what Ronald D. Moore thinks about the show, we're always talking about Ronald D. Moore. Well, yeah. we've been curious what the actors take away from it as well. And Basically, in this case, what's the message of the show in Katie Sackhoff's eyes? What I think that the main thing that this show is trying to say, with everything else aside, is that regardless of your religion and regardless of where you come from, and who you, who you believe your creator is, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. And if we could just work together, then we should be able to live harmoniously. We should, if we can let go of our differences and realize that we're all just trying to find a place to cohabitate and to be happy on, in. I really think that that's just what it's trying to say. All right, well, nice. there you go. A little bit of off-season BSG goodness. We're hopefully going to get a little bit more. Trisha Helfer's coming to town in uh, the end of August. End of August at so, Fan Expo. So if yeah. you're in Toronto, you if, should come. Definitely, yeah. And if you're not in Toronto, you should come. Um, <laughs> if, if we're lucky, we'll get that interview as well. We'll have a little bit more BSG to talk about. Kind of got tied you guys over until Razor starts up. And quite honestly, tied ourselves over until yeah. Razor comes out. 
But um, that's going to be it for the BSG cast for a little bit. And uh, between now and then, yourgeeknews.com is mm -hmm. going to be bringing all kinds of different movies over the rest of the summer and uh, well into BSG Season 4. Yes. See you guys soon. Bye.